Good evening and welcome to Windsor Gospel Assembly's Thursday night Bible study. Thank you everyone for being here, for those of you who are here and those of you who are joining us uh, online, we welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, once again, uh, as you are aware, uh, we are in the middle of our series called Not Flesh and Blood and today we will be talking about one of the most critical aspects of this battle that we have been discussing. Um, and we will be ending our series today, and then next week we will be having a Q&A session, and then we will be diving into our next topic. So for those of you online who are joining us for the first time, we are Windsor Gospel Assembly. Uh, we're a church that meets here in Windsor, Ontario, and uh, if you would like to know more about us and about our content, you can go to our website at wgachurch.com. You're already on our YouTube channel. Uh, go and check out the playlists that we have there for the different series that we have done and also for our Sunday morning broadcasts. Um, let's quickly open in a word of prayer and then we'll get into today's topic. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, that you are here and that your name is above all names, dear God. God, we know that it is you who, it's your promise, Lord, that two or three have gathered in your name, that you are amongst them, dear God. And God, we know that you are here this evening. God, I pray that as we look into this topic today about the Holy Spirit, dear God, Lord, we pray that your presence will be here, Lord, that Holy Spirit, you will be here, dear God, as you dwell in each one of our hearts. Lord, as we read these truths in the scripture about who you are and what your role is, Lord, and how we can rely on you, dear God. God, we pray that you will resonate in our hearts the truth of that which we are hearing, dear God. God, can you to bless us, can you to use us for the extension of your kingdom? Lord, we pray for those who may be on their way, for those who are um, listening online, or even those who may be watching this at a later point in time, Lord, that your presence will be with them and that your spirit will do that which my words cannot. Keep us in your care and keeping, Lord, and uh, be with me as I read your word and as we are reminded of what the Holy Spirit does in our life, Lord, that we will not just hear it, but we will function in it. In all of this, Lord, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we will we are diving today into the topic of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about not flesh and blood, which is that our battle that we fight is uh, not against flesh and blood. And we know that it is against the principalities of darkness, as Paul calls out, and against the ruler of this world, and about how we are attacked with schemes. We are not just attacked straight on. And... Because the enemy himself is not flesh and blood, Paul wants to make it clear that we are not fighting humans, we are not fighting our, our uh, brothers and sisters, or even others, humans on earth who don't know Jesus. Lord, we are not fighting against them, we are fighting against Satan and his minions, as I like to call it. And since Satan is not of flesh and blood, He's less interested in attacking our flesh and blood and more interested in attacking our soul. He's more interested in taking us down from the inside. And as we've been saying that he does attack uh, things around us, but what we've been making very clear during the series is that the attack that is going on around us is usually just a distraction for the attack that is happening within us. And so... We've been talking about the way he operates. We've been talking about um, what his methodology is. We, we talk about the symptoms, about how it is that we um, kind of uh, can recognize that we are falling prey to his uh, the attacks of the enemy. And we talked last a uh, couple of weeks ago about how we resist the attacks of the enemy. And today we're going to talk about how we are actually victorious in this spiritual battle. We are victorious in this spiritual battle because we are not fighting in our own power, 
but in God's mighty power. So turn with me to Ephesians 6. We are going to look at something that we've been reading throughout this series, uh, which is the armor of God. But I want to just read verse 10. You know, in verse 11 is where Paul writes, put on the full armor of God. But right before he writes that in verse 10, Paul writes, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So you see that even before Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God, he's making it very clear how we will stand. He's making it clear that the reason we are able to resist the attack of the enemy and stand against the enemy is not because we somehow have the capability to do that, but because we are standing in God's mighty power. Okay? We are standing in God's mighty power. Now, when I was reading... Um, and preparing for today, one of the uh, verses that I'm going to go to right next to this is when we talk about might, we're typically talking about uh, group strength. So like when you say a mighty army, right? You're talking about the strength in numbers and a large collective force, right? When we talk about power, we're typically talking about the power within um, of the nature of one person who has that power. So we're talking about power. Right? When it is one individual power. Um, turn with me to Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah, a prophet in the Old Testament. Um, and I'm going to read verse 6. And I'm going to give you a little context of this a little later, but I want to read verse 6 of Zechariah chapter 4. And this is what uh, the Lord speaks through the prophet Zechariah. So he said to me, so this is God talking to Zechariah, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Almighty God. Says the Lord Almighty. Not by might, not by power, but by spirit, says the Lord. So when we talk about this, God is very clearly making a point that, and this is to encourage Zerubbabel, that the victory is not dependent on the might of your army. The victory is not dependent on the skill of the individual people within the army. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. So God is making a point that um, it is the spirit of God that empowers situations for us to be victorious. Now, a little bit about this context. Here, uh, Zechariah is having this vision about a gold lampstand and two olive trees. And it is the olive trees and the oil from the olive tree that is um, causing the lampstand to be lit. Right? And we see this uh, pattern in the Bible over and over again. Um, that the, it is the oil that is lighting the lamp or keeping the lamp alight. And so the oil and the olive trees in this case, from where the oil is, so to speak, coming, is representative of God's mighty power. So once again, uh, Zerubbabel is being told that, okay, fine, you are the one being used by God. You are the one that God is using in this situation. But the empowerment that is causing you to be victorious is this oil, is the spirit of God. And so it doesn't matter how strong the lampstand is, you know, how beautiful it is, you know, if there is no oil in it, it is useless, right? A more modern day example would be like, you could have an amazing, you know, Lamborghini or Porsche car parked out there. But if it's not got fuel in it, it's not going anywhere. It's just standing there looking pretty, not doing the purpose for which it was built. Right? In the same way, when we talk about us, when we talk about um, us as, <coughs> as humans who are the stone in God's temple, 
we are reminded that it is the Spirit of God that empowers us to actually accomplish the things that God has called us towards. Not our strength, not our might, not our power. It is the Spirit of God. And today we're going to be focusing on the Holy Spirit, which has again already been referenced, that we are standing in God's mighty power. And we're going to be seeing all that the Bible has to say about the Holy Spirit and how being, functioning and walking in step with the Holy Spirit helps us to resist the attack of the enemy and for us to stand. Right? Uh, we've already established during this series that we're not trying to win something. We're not trying to defeat the enemy because the enemy is already defeated by what Jesus has done on the cross. But the enemy wants to take us down. He wants to make us stumble. And so Paul is telling us to put on the full armor of God that we may stand. That we may stand. Right? And you'll see very interestingly how every aspect of the armor of God, if you look at other aspects in the Bible, you will see it linked back to the Spirit of God. Okay? So let's quickly take a look at the armor of God here. Right? Stand firm with the belt of truth. Okay? So remember, anytime this concept of truth, and based on the verses we'll be reading, whether the concept of truth ties back to the Holy Spirit or not. Okay? Um, with the breastplate of righteousness. Again, we'll be talking about how, whether righteousness ties back to the Spirit of God or not. With your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So once again, we'll talk about how, whether the gospel is linked back to the Holy Spirit or not. The faith, right? Faith, again, is that something that is linked to the concept of the Holy Spirit or not? Salvation, is it linked to the concept of the Holy Spirit or not? And the sword... Again, in this case, he actually calls it out, the sword of the Spirit. So again, we already know even by this text that it is linked. But we'll be seeing that again, the Word of God being linked to the Holy Spirit. And so it is very evident as Paul writes this, that in order for us to put on the full armor of God, we need to have a very clear understanding of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So let's pause and let me ask a question for all of us to think, right? What is our relationship with the Holy Spirit? Right? You know, we talk about God, God being a triune God. We use the word Trinity. We know that He's three separate, distinct persons with the same personality, the same entity, interacting in three persons and we interact and we have been told, given directions to interact with each of them, right? So for example, Jesus says that, you know, you will not ask me, you will ask directly of my Father in my name, right? Jesus is saying when you ask, when you pray, you can boldly go to the throne room of God in Jesus' name and ask things, right? When we think about who died for us on the cross, you think about Jesus, you know, say that I'm so thankful Jesus died for me. Jesus is my, old, my brother, firstborn in all creation. He's the one that has saved me. Jesus is my savior, right? So in many ways, we have a very clear understanding of our relationship with God the Father and God the Son. What is our relationship? What comes to mind when you think of your relationship of the Holy Spirit? Do we think of it? Do we focus on it? Because here's, I think that this is something that uh, our youth leaders taught us, um, Joel and Wendy, when they were leading us in youth, they would always tell us this one thing, right? The Holy Spirit is not a force. You know, we don't use the word, you know, it, you know, in terms of the Holy Spirit. You know, like Star Wars, there's this force, you know, the force awakens, you know, no. The force is something that people have or use to accomplish something, right? The Holy Spirit is not a force. 
The Holy Spirit is a person. Right? The things the Holy Spirit gives, one of those things is power. But we are not running after the power. We are seeking a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so sometimes we think of the Holy Spirit as this entity, as this um, force or this power, you know, a secret weapon. But the Holy Spirit is a person because the Bible tells us it is possible to grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, it is possible to quench the Holy Spirit. You know, like, how, how, grieve means someone getting hurt. So the Holy Spirit can get hurt based on things we do or say or ignore what he tells us. And so we need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, Francis Chan wrote a book about this um, called Forgotten God. You know, and he made a claim about how in the church we talk about God the Father, God the Son. But, you know, we, we reduce the Holy Spirit to this theoretical thing. Right? The Holy Spirit is a person with whom we must have an interaction, just like we have an interaction with God the Father and God the Son. Okay. Let us talk about a few things that the Bible tells us about the Holy Spirit, right? Now, we know the Spirit of God is a very common phrase. It exists all the way back in Genesis when the Bible tells us the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, but when I'm referring to the Holy Spirit, um, I'm referring to the clarity of how the Holy Spirit interacts in the life of a believer. And that has been revealed to us in the New Testament through Jesus Christ. Okay, Even in the Old Testament, we see about the Holy Spirit, about how um, when um, the Holy Spirit would come upon certain individuals and empower them to do something, but it wouldn't indwell within them. But for those who have accepted Christ Jesus and who are cleansed from the inside and who are dead and now resurrected with Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Right? That's what the Bible says. And so, if you turn to um, John chapter 14, we will see here Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, reading from verse 15 onwards. He says, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. Remember the belt of truth, which we put around ours to hold the armor in place? Well, guess where who helps us have access to that belt, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you. He's talking to his disciples now. He lives with you and will be in you. Think of that, right? So Jesus is telling his disciples that the Holy Spirit is with you but the Holy Spirit will be in you. So you see, at this point when Jesus is talking this, like he has not yet died on the cross, he has not yet paid the price, you know, the salvation through grace, through the putting their trust in Jesus Christ, that has not yet happened. But Jesus, looking forward, is saying, once that happens, and for those of you who put your faith in me, the Holy Spirit will dwell in you. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost, which is why Jesus at his ascension didn't tell them that, you know, he told, he gave them a mission to go out into the world. But his immediate task to them was go and wait until you're clothed with on power from on high. So Jesus told them to wait till they had received the Holy Spirit. Right? So the spirit of truth. Verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, because, because I live, you also will live. Right? 
Then jumping on to verse um, 25. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Okay? So the first thing I want to remember that Jesus is saying here is that the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Now the Holy Spirit teaches us truth, but it does not ever contradict what Jesus has said. You see, the Spirit and Jesus and the Father, they are never in conflict of will. They are always in agreement. Okay? Which means the Holy Spirit can't tell me that, oh, my instruction to you is to sit at home and just worry about your own salvation. <laughs> because Jesus said, go out into the world and make disciples. So you see, the Holy Spirit will never contradict what Jesus said. But rather, the Holy Spirit will remind us of what Jesus said. Right? <coughs> Let's read a few more verses about the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm going to go to the same uh, conversation, but a few chapters ahead. So jump with me to John chapter 16 now. Okay, let's go to John chapter 15, verse 26, and we'll continue to read on, right? Uh, John chapter 15, verse 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, again, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit, he will testify about me, and you must also testify, for you have been me with me from the beginning, Right? And then in um, John chapter 16, verse 12, Jesus says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Okay? So the Spirit is giving us what belongs to Jesus. And what belongs to Jesus is Jesus' is because it belongs to the Father. You see, Jesus said that no one can come to me unless the Spirit draws him towards me. No one can say Christ is Lord unless the Spirit, unless he has this Holy Spirit. You see, we talked about the belt, but let's talk about salvation. Do you know that it is, you know, Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. Which means our salvation is also the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So soon you will see that it is the spirit that leads us into all truth. It is the spirit that points us back to Jesus. It is the spirit that changes our heart and brings us the Bible says the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive and active within us. What is he, the Bible talking about? The Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit dwells within us and that's why we are saved. That's why we have salvation. That's why we are resurrected in Christ because of the Holy Spirit within us. So you see, even so far by what we have read, we have made sure that we recognize that the belt of truth, we put it on because the spirit of truth dwells within us. Right? 
the helmet of salvation is ours because the spirit that leads to salvation dwells within us. Okay? So now let's move on to the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 13 onwards, right? You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say... Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. You see, Paul in Romans 8 says that we were slaves to the flesh, but now we are slaves to righteousness. How is that happening? Verse 17, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh, they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. He goes on to say, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and right desires, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So you see the breastplate of righteousness. This righteousness which is signified by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, that breastplate of righteousness is also linked back to the Holy Spirit because that is the fruit of the Spirit. You see, when Paul is writing, stand in God's mighty power, he's basically saying, walk in step with the Holy Spirit that is empowering you on the inside. The Holy Spirit that is God. You see, we're not going to be victorious in this battle. We're not going to be able to resist the enemy. We're not going to be able to um, fight against his schemes and stand firm. We're not going to be able to remain steadfast on the inside. We're, and we're going to get distracted by what's going to happen on the outside if we are not in step with the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. You see, we've already tied the belt back to the Spirit, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation back to the Spirit, the breastplate of righteousness back to the Spirit. Now we see, we've, we've talked about in this series about how the enemy likes to do secret things without our knowledge, right? And he wants us to focus on what's going around us rather than the attack that is happening within us, right? But you see that 
it is the spirit of god that reveals things to us that are hidden i'm going to read first corinthians um, chapter 2 reading from verse 6 and paul says we do however speak a message of wisdom among the mature but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing no we declare god's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that god destined for our glory before time began none of the rulers of this age understood it for if they had they would not have crucified the lord of glory however as it is written what no eye has seen what no ear has heard and what no human mind has conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him these so this is what he says what no eye has seen what no ear has heard and what no human mind has conceived he is quoting from isaiah and then paul completes that quote by saying this the things that god has prepared for those who love him these are the things that god has revealed to us by his spirit you see the holy spirit reveals the secrets of god that we are unaware of until now he goes on to say the spirit searches all things even the deep things of god for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them in the same way no one knows the thoughts of god except the spirit of god what we have received is not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god so that we may understand what god has freely given us this is what we speak not in words taught by human wisdom but in words taught by the spirit explaining spiritual realities with spiritual taught words okay see we're talking about spiritual warfare right we're talking about not flesh and blood right we're talking about not worldly things but spiritual things right well here is the answer that paul is saying that it is the spirit that explains us spiritual realities with spirit taught words the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of god but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit the person with the spirit makes judgment about all things but such a person is not subject to merely human judgment for who has known the mind of the lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of christ so i don't know if you're catching this link between christ and spirit you see when christ was on earth he knew how to function and what to do and to accurately understand what is going on because he was listening to the voice of the spirit the mind of christ was informed by the spirit of god and because we have the spirit of god we can have the mind of christ let's say that again because we have the spirit of god within us we can have the mind of christ you see the enemy cannot trick us as long as we are listening to the spirit the enemy cannot tempt us as long as we are listening to the spirit the enemy cannot overpower us because as long as we are functioning in the empowerment of the spirit the spirit of god dwelling within us leads us to truth helps us live a righteous life is instrumental in our salvation and the bible tells us that even the faith that we have is a gift that is given to us by the spirit of god the word and understanding the word of god as we read jesus said he will understand you will understand all things he will lead you to all truth because he is the spirit of truth so every aspect of our armor 
is empowered by the Spirit, which is why Paul ends that by saying the gospel is driven by the Spirit, the righteousness is driven by the Spirit, the belt of truth, again, driven by the Spirit, uh, the shield of faith, the gift of the Spirit, the sword of the uh, Spirit is, again, of the Spirit. And Paul, that's why, says in verse 18, right after this, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Because Paul is saying if you are connected to the Holy Spirit, you are empowered and functioning in the armor of God. So let me ask this question again that I asked earlier. What is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? When was the last time you heard the Holy Spirit tell you something? When was the last time you actually said, you know what? Holy Spirit, what are you telling me? Holy Spirit, read, lead me today. See, when our mind is blank, we run to things to fill it. When our mind is blank, you should run to the Holy Spirit. When you're busy, you should run to the Holy Spirit. When you're sad, you should run to the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said that I will not leave you alone, but I will send you a comforter. You know, the word referring to the Holy Spirit is an advocate, a comforter, someone who is alongside us. Word in Greek is parakletos. Right? The Holy Spirit is with us, indwells us, will be with us forever. And it is so sad that sometimes we are constantly just functioning in our knowledge of the Bible rather than what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us through the Bible. We are just functioning in our dependency of fellowship, which is a great thing, rather than relying on what the Holy Spirit is doing in our group together. We pray as we see fit instead of praying in the Spirit as Paul tells us to, because the Spirit knows the will of God and helps us to pray in accordance to what God has destined. Do you want to be living in the empowerment, the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit? You see, it makes things difficult. It makes things unpredictable. You know, John 3.16, we say in that whole discourse where Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he says that, can you see where the wind comes from? Can you see where it is going to? And the answer is no. And he says, so it is with the Spirit. You don't know what the Spirit is going to do because it's the Spirit of God. Who knows the mind of God except the Spirit of God? It's not something you and I can predict, but when we start obeying the Spirit, we end up finding ourselves in places where God has, wants to use us. You see, the Spirit reminds us that God is with us. Jesus said, after I go, I will come and dwell with you. I and my Father will make our home in you. How does that happen? Well, because the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. Right? We've been told in Ephesians chapter 1 that... Um, Okay, so verse 13. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, possession to the praise of his glory. Do you know the Holy Spirit is a guarantee? That we are going to inherit great things from God in the life that is to come. Because the Holy Spirit is already a great thing we have inherited from God in our life right now. The Holy Spirit tells us that God's promise is true because he has already given us the Holy Spirit in our life. If you turn with me, and you see this concept showing up over and over again. Um, Turn with me to Romans chapter 5, where Paul is doing his treatise on suffering and pain. 
And he ends with saying, hope. He says, uh, we glory in our suffering, verse 3 uh, of chapter 5 of Romans. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Again, the Holy Spirit is a promise and a guarantee that God is with us and that God loves us. See, the Holy Spirit reminds us of what Jesus said. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit reveals the things that we don't see. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray in accordance to God's will. And the Holy Spirit empowers us. Now I want to spend some time there and that's where we're going to end our discussion for today. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live for God. Do you know that the Bible doesn't just talk about the fruit of the Spirit, but it talks about the gifts of the Spirit? What are the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how are they different than the fruit of the Spirit? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let's read that. And Paul explains this very thing. Brothers and sisters, verse 1. Uh, brothers and sisters, I want you to know about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know that at one time you were unbelievers, you were somehow drawn away to worship statues of gods that couldn't even speak. So I want you to know that no one who is speaking with the help of God's Spirit says, may Jesus be cursed. And without the help of the Holy Spirit, no one can say, Jesus is Lord. There are different kinds of gifts, but they are all given to believers by the same Spirit. There are different ways to serve, but they all come from the same Lord. There are different ways the Spirit works, but the same God is working in all the ways in all the people. The Holy Spirit is given to each one of us in a special way that is for the good of all. To some, the Spirit gives the message of wisdom. To others, the same Spirit gives a message of knowledge. To others, the same Spirit gives faith. To others, the that one spirit gives gift of healing. To others, he gives the gift powers to do miracles. To others, he gives the ability to prophesy. To others, he gives the ability to tell the spirits apart. To others, he gives the ability to speak in different kinds of languages they had not known before. And to still others, he gives the ability to explain what was said in those languages. All the gifts are produced by one and the same spirit. He gives gifts to each person just as he decides. Just as he decides. You see, the gift of the Spirit is given to us to empower us so that we can function towards the glory of God. Do you know what is the gift of the Spirit that God has given you? Do you know what your gifting is? I mean, if you don't know, then the first thing is, oh, what, how is my relationship with the Holy Spirit? Go to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to reveal your gifting to you. This is not an exhaustive list. We see that also in Romans um, chapter 12. We also see it in Ephesians. There are multiple places where the Bible talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But one thing is over and over again that it is for the body of Christ. You see, when we are, we are told that we are going into battle where we have to put on the armor of God, what picture comes to mind? 
Does the picture come to mind, this one person standing against an army? Or does the picture come to mind is that we are suiting up because we are fighting together against the forces of darkness. You see, our fight is not a solo thing. It's a joint effort. Which means that even in our own lives, even when the enemy is attacking just us on the inside, we still overcome it by being in community and being part of the body. That's why isolation is never an answer. And see, all the gifts have not been given to all of us. The gifts have been scattered as the Spirit decides so that when I need something that you have, I will have to go to you. We are functioning as a body. But each gift edifies the entire body. So again, it is the Holy Spirit's way of making sure that the body of Christ stays together. And he goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 12, again, the next part of what I read is that there is one body, but it has many parts, but all its part, many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We were all baptized into one Holy Spirit, and so we were formed into one body. It didn't matter whether we were Jews or Gentiles, slave or free people. We were all given the same spirit to drink. So the body is not made up of just one part. It has many parts. So all of us have a role to play in all of our lives. If you are not functioning in your gifting, the entire body is suffering. You see, my goal today is to recognize that we are, when we are fighting this battle that is not about flesh and blood, we have to fight in the spiritual power that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. I encourage each one of you, as we close, I encourage each one of you to practice and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Learn to, to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Read the Bible and pray, God, speak to me. Ask, God, reveal my gift that the Holy Spirit has given me. Help me to grow in my gift. Help me to mature in my gift. Help me to function in my gift that others may benefit. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the secret things of God that we can't figure out. Ask the Holy Spirit to help us recognize what is of God and what is not of God. Help the, ask the Holy Spirit to help us to remember what Jesus has said. Go to the Holy Spirit and ask that you be reminded of the love of God for you because the Holy Spirit reminds us that God is with us and God has not forsaken us. You see, the more we forget about the Holy Spirit, the more weak and disconnected we will feel from God and the enemy will attack more and more of us on the inside by distracting us from what goes around us. But the spirit of truth guides us to see this scheme of the enemy, reminds us that God is with us, empowers us to fight this battle, connects us with every other member within the body, and helps us be victorious. It helps us produce the fruit of the spirit, which is the breastplate of righteousness. It helps us know the truth, which is the belt that we secure our armor with. It helps us make use of the word of God to tear down every stronghold of the enemy because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. It is the spirit of God that gives us faith by which we can extinguish all the enemies of the, all the arrows of the enemy. And it is the spirit of God that has brought us into salvation in Christ because of which we are putting on the helmet of salvation. You see, every aspect of the armor of God is activated and made alive by the Spirit of God. So when we stand, we are not standing in our power or our ability to 
wear the armor properly. We are standing in the power of God's Holy Spirit so that we can resist the enemy. I know we've talked about a lot in this series from the um, modus operandi of the enemy, the symptoms of when we are failing. We talked about uh, how we resist the enemy. Today I'm talking about who it is that helps us be victorious. Not what, not the power, not the force. It is a person. It is God himself that dwells within us. When you hear the words of God and when you hear the voice of the Spirit and when you are empowered by the Spirit, you will be functioning in the victory that God has already won on the cross. When you ignore the Holy Spirit and just try to make sense of Christianity on your own, we will find ourselves weak and we'll find ourselves disconnected, and we'll find ourselves prey to the attacks of the enemy. Let's look to the Lord in prayer, and we'll close. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you've given us. God, I pray that, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will lead us in every aspect of our life. Lord, that in all that we do and say, Lord, that we will Seek to hear your voice, dear God. Dear Holy Spirit, we pray that you will help us to recognize the giftings that you have given us. Lord, that you will help us to recognize your voice as you lead us into all truth when we read scripture, when we talk to one another, when we are in prayer and fellowship. Dear Spirit, that we will pray in accordance to the will of God because, dear Spirit, you help us to pray and know what is right. God, I'm praying for each and every one that is gathered here and that is joining us online or watching this at a later point, that they will be clothed with a power from on high, dear God, that, that they will put their trust in Jesus Christ and they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, for those of us who know you, dear God, that we will continue to function in that knowledge, but Lord, that we will be supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit. God, we are praying for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, just like the oil that brings the lampstand to life, dear God, because without the oil, the lampstand is useless, dear God. In the same way, Lord, without the Spirit, we are merely dry bones, Lord, and even with us being assembled together with flesh and muscle and tendons, we are not alive until, God, you breathe your spirit and we come back to life. God, I pray that you will make us alive yet again, dear God, that you will do something new in us, that you will pour out a double anointing of your Holy Spirit on us than what we have had, dear God, that we will function in your mighty power. God, we are praying for everyone that is gathered here, Lord. Lord, let your giftings of the Spirit flow freely in this church, dear God. Lord, let your truth flow freely because your Spirit is leading us into all truth. Lord, let us be drawn towards Jesus and Lord, let us have access to everything that is yours, dear Jesus, because the Spirit will make it available to us, Lord. Lord, because the Holy Spirit is within us, Lord, let us have that mind of Christ and function in that way. Dear Jesus, as you said, that it is you, it is yours, and it is because of you that we can have access to this. Lord, because of you, we come and stand before the, boldly before the throne room of grace and ask these things of our Father. And dear Jesus, it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, next week, we will be having a Q&A session about this particular topic, and we'll be wrapping up our series. Um, please uh, feel free to submit your questions. And um, the following week, we will be starting a new series. Um, and we will be uh, letting everyone know. Once again, if you find the content that has been shared during this series beneficial, make sure you share it with your friends and family. And um, pray that God will help you to recognize the voice of the Spirit. Pray that as you dive into Scripture, that you will walk in step with the Spirit, that we will not try to complete in our flesh 
what has been begun in us by the Spirit. And as you ask for more of the Holy Spirit in your life, that you will start to function in the empowerment of God. Until we meet again, may the grace of God, may the grace of Christ be with each one of you. Stay safe and take care.